Hello there YouTube, so i um, going to do a little video today about the NI patrol pack Sorry I can be out in the woods, you know, doing a walk or a camp or something and do it there But you know, I've been had a lot on, been really busy lately and uh, I want to get these videos done, I've got quite a few ideas But anyway, I'll talk about that in another video because you're probably here to hear about this backpack rather than me and my life and what I'm doing. So um, it's called the, it's known as the NI patrol pack because it was used by the British Army during Northern Ireland sort of debacle, whatever you want to call it. So the proper name for this, which it says in the label, is patrol pack 30 litre DPM IRR. So it's a patrol pack, not a Bergen, which means I think basically it's smaller, it sits a bit different. Um, I'll talk about the fit later. Um, the DPM is disruptive pattern material, it's just this woodland style camo that uh, the British Army used to use. Now it's moved over to MTP, which a lot of people don't like. I mean, I'm not, I'm not that stealth that I really mind to be honest I think this probably is better for woodland but MTP is like a multi-terrain so anyway let's not get sidetracked IRR some kind of infrared resistance I think it stands for so it's the material like yeah it's resistance infrared it's not really relevant to us wild campers or anything like that um, but that's a bit of background information but when you look for it online you'll want to look for genuine British Army NI patrol pack it's known as the NI patrol pack because of the whole using it during Northern Ireland thing so yeah that's the easiest way to look it up there's plenty of copies out there I say copies some of them are very good so um, there's some cheaper ones by like a company called Combat UK and Maybe some other brands out there, I can't really remember, but there's a lot of budget versions of these that have been uh, remade in this exact style, but I think um, they're just not quite as tough. Maybe the denier of Kodora that they use aren't as thick, aren't as strong. Nothing really beats the original for robustness and toughness. So if you want the real thing, be careful, because there's a lot of... Um, a lot of websites selling more modern versions of these. Generally, they won't be DPM, but they uh, they won't always say what the brand is. So make sure you get the genuine British Army if that's what you want. The benefit of the more modern ones is that although this has got these little loops on, they're horizontal. And Molly, which is what most things uh, are designed for nowadays, are vertical hoops. So I'll show you again, I'll show you later in the video um, how I've adapted that to be able to fit vertical fixings on it. I believe Caramore SF, which is not related to Caramore from Sports Direct, uh, do a very high-end version of this sort of thing, but um, I'm, I'm not too sure if it's exactly the same. They, they do a um, patrol pack called um, the Predator, and I think you'd have to buy the side pouches separately to add them on to make it more resemble this. I think apart from the side pouches missing, it's exactly the same sort of spec. And it's essentially a patrol pack based on this. Um, but yeah, but you have to buy the side pouches separately and attach them on. Whereas on this, they're actually fixed. You can get these without the waist strap, without the sternum chest strap. Um, but when you get them with them on, they look like, at least with this one, this has got all the straps, they've been sewed on. So that's another thing to look out for when you're buying it, if it matters to you. Generally you're getting these obviously second hand, they're quite old now. So um, if, you, if it's important for you to have a waist strap and a sternum strap, make sure the one you're buying has it. Overall, it's a wicked little, little bag actually for wild camping overnight. Uh, one person, it's supposed to be 30 litre, it says it's 30 litre, 
it's much more than 30 litre, I'd say it's more like 40 litre. And when you see all the copies um, being sold on websites, they always say about 38, 40 litres. So I think it's much closer to that because of all the space you've got in the extra pockets and stuff. So 30 litres is really underestimating it, I think. I fit quite a lot of it in here. Um, when I've been out on a wild camp with this, it's generally been my booby bag, British Army booby bag and British Army basher. And it all combines pretty well. I'll show you roughly how I put some of my stuff in there. Um, you could fit, you know, a small tent in there. You could put the tent under the hood, maybe strap it on the bottom. There's plenty you can do with this, but you have to adapt it a little bit. There are people that can sew extra bits on and stuff like that for you. Uh, you find them on Facebook, probably you find them online. Just normally they're just independent people that are good at stitching things on these bags. So um, yeah, I'll give you a rundown of all the individual features now. Right, I hope that's lit up. Try to light it up the best I can. Now, first of all, just run through the basic features that it comes with, and we'll talk about these other bits and pieces. I should have really taken those off before, but. You got the two straps which obviously tighten down. There's a little bit of velcro on those. I think that's just if you've got too much of this you can fold it up but that might come in handy. They're actually stitched onto the straps. Normal buckles. This is the opening. And it's got this big kind of... I suppose it's like a rain hood thing in the opening. But that could actually add a bit of extra height to it if you needed to. And that has a drawstring. Okay, and then when you've cinched that down, it could be sticking out, you could tuck it in. Then it's got another drawstring at the top there to really seal everything in. And then the hood can fold over. Um, so in the hood itself, You've got a compartment here, which goes the full length of the hood, right inside there. It's quite a big space there, it's really usable. Then up the top, you've got a much smaller pocket. It's still pretty, pretty big, you know, for quite a lot of space, but obviously if you pack that out, it'll encroach into that one. There's two vertical straps there. Two right on top of the hood as well. So obviously you can put stuff through there, whether it's you know paracord or bungee cord or whatever you elastic or something, straps, whatever you want through there. If you want to put something on top of your bag, obviously something light generally goes on the top. Then there's no pocket on the inside. But those two pockets are big enough that you know you don't really need much more on top. Then you've got the side pouches, which again have a clip, and then again have this little rain hood thingy, which opens up that. And I've actually got my British Army. Desert pattern basher in there with the paracord uh, ridge line all ready to go. Other side pouch exactly the same, and you've got these. I mean, I, I don't know all the equipment that was used back in the day on this bag, so I'm sure there's a reason why these are. For example, that strap is slightly longer than these ones, um, but still they're horizontal. So there's two sets of them on the side pouch. And on the bottom of the side patch, there's a hole, a little eyelet hole. I think that's just for drainage. So you'd keep stuff in here, like your bivy, your, your basher, your, if you want to put a small tent, if it fits in there. Anything that could get wet, but you don't mind getting wet. And then it can drain out of there. Then, on the front, get these bungees out of the way. As standard, you have a set of horizontal straps here and then slightly closer together you have another set of horizontal straps I'll show you about these in a minute let's turn it over so on the back 
but you know your normal shoulder straps absolutely standard like anything else a couple of vertical little straps there grab handle and your uh, your sternum strap is a lot lower down than you might expect I know on sort of proper backpacks backpacking backpacks and even bourbons it might be more like up here you could always put something across there but to be honest I'm a small guy and when I'm wearing this these are right up on my top of my shoulders and this is kind of on my chest it's, it doesn't look like that but trust me when you're wearing it that's the way it works out and then the uh, the waist strap is very basic it's not padded in any way but it's got a nice big chunky clip it's just a thick strap and the reason is because and I'll show you me wearing it it's not really a hip belt you know it's not it hasn't got like a um a padded thing to go on your hips because it's a patrol pack this is not a hip belt it's a waist belt so it sits higher up on your back and i'll show you that like i say later on now back to the front i really wanted to add stuff to the front of this and you'll see from my other videos that i've used like a bottle holder uh molly compatible bottle holder thingy for a little brew kit but obviously everything goes vertically. I've tried attaching it sideways, but it kind of rolls down and it flops around a bit. So I got hold of these T sections. So they just click together like that. And you'll often find these nowadays, they come with uh, packaged in with the Osprey sort of Molly panel which might also work with this. There's also some leg uh, molly panels that go on your thigh and they look like they've got horizontal straps which you might be able to use on this as well. It depends on the spacing. So that's something to look at for the future. But for now, this is what I came up with. These T-bar sections, um, put them through these narrower straps here. And then obviously you can pull them tighter loosen them up and that gives you some sort of vertical straps to go around to go through there it's not ideal it's not perfect I'm sure there's better solutions but for someone that isn't really into sewing on tough material like I like this like I'm not versed in that this was a, a pretty quick and easy solution for that but maybe not perfect and it was very difficult getting them t-bars through here because this is tight i had to really stretch it and force it through but you know for now it works i will be trying to get a little molly panel uh, to attach to it i think that'll work out better so this is it on no i'm not exactly dressed for the occasion I'm wearing a shirt but this is the waist belt as you can see it's quite quite high up even on me um, and I'm only a short guy, but actually um, I find with normal backpacks, I have to get a backpack which is kind of long back, not extra long, but long, even though I'm really short. So, you know, a backpack isn't, doesn't always fit according to whether you're tall or short, because I actually have a really long torso, even though I'm a short guy and some tall people might have really long legs and a short torso, so it depends. But this patrol back, even on me, um, yeah, it's only just on the waist. It's actually a little bit higher than my waist. The sternum strap is quite close to it, but the only other place you could put it would be up here and then it would be far too close to my, my neck. Um, it's not, you know, it's not a backpack. It's not a, a Bergen in any way. It's a completely different animal. So if you think of it as the same thing, you're just not going to like it, it's not going to fit right. It's more of more relying on these just shoulder straps and uh, the lighter weight of it to just kind of keep it close to your body and higher up on you so it's out of the way of everything. And you can go, I mean, I'm not familiar completely with the kit that was used with it. I assume there might have been something lower down, um, so this had to be up and out of the way. These are kind of add ons that you may or may not like. I think it does stabilise it a little bit better for us civvies doing wild camping and stuff. Maybe in the army it wouldn't be so great, but anyway, that's not what we're using it for. 
without those it doesn't make much of a difference it, it's not going to move around a hell of a lot more with or without them it just feels a little bit more stable so now i'll just go through what i use it for roughly where i keep things so i've got um these bungee cords on the bottom which is very easy to do you just you know double them up slip that through and then put them through themselves and then they can hook onto any number of these straps wherever you want depending on what you've got in them so um i use it to hold stuff down here you could put um a tent i suppose underneath I think I've put from memory a tarp and maybe a foil mat within that tarp or I'll put the foil mat on top. But basically this is a good way because you can strap things onto the outside but also I use these bungees to put on the corners of my basher when I'm setting them up, setting that up. Uh, I just found in my last video that I used this, it's just so much easier with it rather than you know guy lines or paracord. Good old bungees, just very simple, quick and easy, and good in windy weather. Um, so then on top I have put, yeah, like I say, the foil mat, which is uh, the one I've been using. is very thin, really lightweight. It's not foam, it's just the foil mat, and that will just slip in there. Again, you could put your tarp in there, you could put your jacket on through there. It loosens up enough that you could fit something in there but obviously if you have it really packed out like these straps here aren't that long i don't know if you can get longer ones and if this bag in particular has just been given shorter ones than than some others i don't, I don't know but they i would like those to be longer really if there was more on that more play then this could lift up more and you could stash more stuff in there so you're a little bit limited by that i'd go with straps in the bottom if you want to put a lot in there obviously bits and pieces go in the top so in here i've generally got tent pegs and uh, some paracord or guy lines or both i've got my extra bungees in here and i'll pack all extra bits and pieces you know even a a lightweight jacket um a wash kit food whatever and then a small pouch up the top and there you go, it's a mosquito head net. So when you're in the bivy bag, you might need that. Small toothpaste. I generally put a coffee or coffee hot chocolate mix in one of these. And you can keep your head torch, um, any little bits and pieces that you need to get to whilst you're on the move. You don't want to be packing it, stuffing it to the bottom of the bag because there's only one way into this bag and that's from the top. So all your little bits and pieces that you need to hand, I'd shove in there. As I showed you before, the side pouch, I've got the basher in there and that fits perfectly in there. Uh, you could, you know, stash extra stuff on top, tent pegs and squash it down. There's, there's still more space in there. But I just find that's a really good pocket for deploying your ridge line and your basher and then just stuffing it back in when it's wet after a rainy camp because this pocket is separate to all the others and with the drainage hole it's perfect you know you just it keeps it away from all your dry kit in the other side i've generally put a couple of water bottles so i can fit like a nalgene and a thin long bottle in there both at the same time or a nalgene and a shitload of food Brew, brew kit stuff whatever like I said to create more space I've got the extra um, molly bottle holder which I'll put a link to the video for that and I'll put a picture up of it um, I have that strapped onto the front so that I've got a uh, cook pot slash cup um, load of tea and coffee and uh, a little mini stove and everything I need can all stash into that on the front so it doesn't mean that I have to take up space in the rest of the bag and in the main compartment I'll generally put the uh, the bivy bag, sleeping bag, pillow, sleeping mat, 
all of that stuff can go in there and there's generally a bit of space left in the main compartment still for food that I couldn't fit anywhere else extra layers of clothing um, I have had a wool blanket in there so although that looks quite thin trust me there's quite a lot of space in there because all the rest of your kit is in these pouches these side pouches in the lid so this just left for all your main gear so that's pretty much it how I use it okay so that's pretty much it for the um, British Army NI patrol pack you will have seen me use it in a few videos before so go back and check them out if you want to see it in action but um, these are still around and generally they'll cost about the same as uh, you know one of the one of the sort of more modern copies of it and I think it is better than them in terms of robustness they're getting harder to get now harder to find obviously if you want something bigger um, that's more comfortable for for backpacking or or multi-day trips then obviously you want to go for a Bergen or something anyway but I just use this as an overnighter and it does me alright as with all these videos I'll probably think oh I forgot to say about this forgot to say about that but we'll put this video out there get the ball rolling and put in the comments if you have any questions if you do find these videos useful helpful please do remember to like and subscribe and um, like I say yeah put any comments down below any questions and I normally do get back pretty quickly so thanks for watching